right, blasting capitalism. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is taking her attacks one step further. Take a listen to this. The most important thing is the concentration of capital, and it means that we seek and prioritize profit and the accumulation of money above all else, and we seek it at any human and environmental cost. That is what that means. And to me, that ideology is not sustainable and cannot be redeemed. What we are reckoning with are the consequences of putting profit above everything else in society. That was her definition of capitalism. That's what she said the definition of capitalism is. Joining us now to react is Dan Hanninger from The Wall Street Journal. He is um, part of the editorial team and a Fox News contributor as well. I think that she needs a dictionary <laughs> of some type because she doesn't know what capitalism is. It's, you know, when the means of production are in private hands as opposed to in state hands or government hands. Socialism versus capitalism. What do, you, what do you think of her interpretation of what she thinks capitalism is? Well, I've read through a lot of that uh, interview she gave down there in Texas. That's about the most coherent thing that she said. Um, among yeah. other things, she uh, remarked that uh, Ronald Reagan's presidency was racist. Franklin Delano Roosevelt's New Deal was also racist. So she was really on a roll down there. And the danger in her remarks on capitalism is not, uh, not so much that the uh, Democratic Party is going to adopt Ocasio-Cortez's version of socialism, it's that I think a lot of the Democrats are intimidated by her large presence. I mean, she was the most popular uh, person to appear down there at the South by Southwest conference. And so they begin to find, sort of move in her direction. And while I don't think we'll get anyone like that running for the presidency, this will be sorted out in the Democratic primaries, the real danger, Melissa, is what would an, the next Democratic president do? Yeah. And I think that in many ways you could regard her as kind of a stalking horse for someone like Elizabeth Warren, who has this Accountable Capitalism Act, which would charter some large corporations, require them to have a federal charter, or to elect 40 percent of their board, uh, open those elections to workers. I don't know if Republicans are really pointing out, though, the, the hypocrisy in her argument, in the sense that she says she's for the people, but what she's advocating, socialism, is a government takeover of resources. So basically, it's a power grab for her. She wants her and her, and her fellow politicians to be in charge of industry and doling out money and goods and services and health care and food to the rest of the country. It's a power grab on her part. Wouldn't it be good for people to point that out? She's not a friend of the people. She wants to be the boss, as she said. I'm the boss. I'm in charge. Yeah, well, that's, uh, and, you know, I think the benign version of that was the Democratic Party and presidency that we just had for eight years. I'm not going to equate Barack Obama's presidency with o Ocasio-Cortez, but in terms of its intentions, the administrative state, the enormous amount of regulations, it imposed on the private sector. The idea, of course, was that the private sector, capitalism, has to be managed by people who are smarter than the people running these yeah. companies. And that was what the Obama presidency did. And I think Ocasio-Cortez is the risk here is she's moving the Democratic Party even further in that direction so that the administrative state under, a, say, a President Warren or President Harris would even be bigger than it was under Barack Obama, which had a suppressive effect on the private economy. That, it, that's a great point. She also had, it, listen to what she had to say about automation as well. Play that soundbite for us. We should not feel nervous about, uh, you know, the toll booth collector not having to collect tolls anymore. Um, we should be excited by that. We live in a society where if you don't have a job, you are left to die. So she said she's she's saying we should be excited about automation because you have more time to do other things. You can be creative. You can be entrepreneurial. You can. And, and that part's true. And then the conclusion she comes to is the reason why everybody's afraid is because if you don't have a job, you're just left to die. I'm like, where is she living? I mean, if only that were the case. But it's not. We're, we're propping up everybody everywhere already. Well, that's what I meant about the incoherent parts of her talk. I mean, that is just basically double talk. No one is left to die. And she somehow has in mind that everybody in the future is not going to have to work. They're going to be able to sit home uh, painting pictures or playing video games. Presumably, this would be with a guaranteed income of some sort. But the real serious question there, Melissa, 
Will this sell? I mean, this may, this is something a lot of Democrats think they're going to have to talk about in the Democratic primaries because they believe the people listening to her want to vote for something like that. But the big question among serious Democrats, is there any chance that those sorts of ideas could fly in a general election? Mm. Well, we will see. Dan Henniger, thank you so much.